Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele, and today is January 30th, 2020. And in this video, we're going to revisit WD Gann's 1929 annual forecast, specifically the projected curve number one, which is what uh, he was basically anticipating the Dow Jones Industrial Average would follow. So what we're going to do in this video is start to develop a mathematical model that can be used to determine whether or not a forecast like this is performing as well as or better than a random forecast. Okay, so this is an important thing for us to be able to do because we might find that this forecast is so uniquely special or better than just a random forecast that it's something we would want to strive to be able to reproduce or we might find that it is performing no better than average or random and it's not something that would be worth our time to actually follow. So that, that's an important distinction to make, I would think. And the reality is things can look very impressive with just a few tweaks and adjustments to them that might not otherwise be very impressive at all. So we really need to be able to quantify how well this is performing relative to just a random forecast. And of course, to do that, we need mathematics. Now, there's actually two separate things that we have to quantify and then mix together to get a, an, a, a fairly accurate representation of what a random forecast would be able to do. We need to deal with the time element and then we need to deal with the price element or specifically the polarity element. So in this video, I'm just gonna go over the math to deal with the time element because frankly, that's actually very easy to accomplish and the polarity element becomes a little bit more um, intricate. So I'm gonna deal with that in its own video. But then once we have those two, we can combine them and that will give us a percentage of 100, you know, like 50%, 70%, whatever, that a randomly generated forecast would be able to achieve on average. And if we get a number from GAN's forecast or anyone else's forecast for that matter, it could be your own, that's better than that number, that percentage number, then, then you're dealing with something that's at least a little bit special, maybe a whole lot special. So this is what needs to happen here. In this particular instance, we, the annual forecast, we know this is an annual forecast. So the first piece of information we need is how long of a time frame this is. And we know that it's one year. The second piece of information that we need is how long is each point in the forecast. So for instance, each pivot point is represented by a single day. So we now know, we know how many days are in a year, there's 365 days in a year, and we know the smallest amount of time that a single point can account for is one day. So we now know that each point represents one 365th of the total amount of time. Hopefully that was easy enough to follow. And you'll notice here there are some instances where GAN gives a time span of several days for one of these pivots, but we'll deal with that in a little bit. So what we're looking at here is the total number of pivots within a given amount of time and how many total possible points are in that given amount of time. So we actually have all that information and we can do some simple math. We'll bring the calculator up here and what we have are 50 total pivots in a amount of time that has the possibility to have up to 365 total pivots. So you divide 50 by 365, and the number you get is the percentage likelihood that a randomly generated forecast would be correct. So in other words, in this particular instance, we have a little bit less than 14% likelihood that this, if this were a randomly generated forecast, that it would be accurate. And what that means is, there's a 14% chance that this high, or I should say that this pivot, because we're not dealing with the polarity yet, that this pivot would land on the second, and there's a 14% chance that it would land on the fifth, 
you'd have to multiply that chance by three right here, but we're going to deal with that in a little bit, like I said. So as it stands right there, we have a 14% chance, a little less, that a randomly generated forecast would work. And we have not tested this, so we don't know what percentage point this falls in exactly. Because the test that I did in the last video, a couple videos ago, we actually had different parameters. So what was actually done in the last video is we allowed up to two days before and two days after a pivot point for a swing to be considered correct. And the reason I use that number, two before and two after, is because that's generally what's acceptable in the uh, high, low, high, low community for this type of a forecast up to two days before and up to two days after. And of course, the tighter it is, the better it is. But so that's why I did that. But if we plug those numbers in, we're going to find out something really interesting happens. So let's look at this. If we have 50 points being shown here as a pivot, and we allow just one day before that and one day after that, we're actually tripling our chances of being correct. So here's what happens. We have 50 points, and if we allow a day before, then that's an extra 50 days that we're allowing, so we have to add that. And if we allow a day after, that's another 50 days that we're allowing, so we have to add that. So instead of 50 points out of 365, we've just increased it to 150 points out of 365. So we would divide by 365, and our percentage is now 41%. What that means is a randomly generated forecast would have a 41% chance of being accurate with those parameters. And the parameter is we can use the day of, the day before or the day after the pivot. So that greatly increased the chance of it looking good. Now, of course, we didn't allow just one day. We allowed up to two days before and two days after. So let's look at those numbers, shall we? 50 pivots. And then two days before is actually an extra 100 days before plus an extra 100 days after gives us a total of 250 possible points of the 365. So using those numbers, we've just increased our odds of success to almost 70%. Now keep in mind, this is for time, it's not for polarity. So it's the dates that we're looking at here, not necessarily whether it's a high or a low at this point. So as of those numbers, a randomly generated forecast would be able to almost seven out of 10 times be accurate. Or more specifically, you would see that 70% of the swings worked out and the other 30% didn't. And that's with allowing two days before and two days after on this particular forecast. Now there's a reason I said this particular forecast because it has 50 points, original pivot points, 50 of them, put into the forecast. If it only had 30 points, then we'd be starting with the number 30, not the number 50, and we would be calculating differently. For instance, just as an example, if we had 30 and then we added two days before, that would be an extra 60 points, and then two days after would be another extra 60 points of the 365. So then we would divide that by 365, in that particular instance, we'd have a 41% chance of success with a randomly generated forecast. Or we would expect that approximately 40% of that forecast would be considered accurate and the rest of it would not be accurate if it were randomly generated. So the number of pivots within the time frame is very important because that gets us to where we need to be able to calculate our actual percentage point for the time. So we're going to go back to over here our 68% because we're not actually done yet. Like, like I said, there are um, certain days here where GAN is giving us extra time basically. Like there's an extra day here, there's an extra day there, there's an extra day there. 
Here there's, what, three extra days? So there's multiple places where he gives us extra time. And if you go through, you should find that there's 29 extra days. You might want to go ahead and check that yourself. Because Lord knows I could have made a mistake. But basically what that means is we have our, with the rules that we had in the last video to go over the forecast, we had the original 50 points, plus we have to add 100 points before that and 100 points after that. Then we have to add the 29 extra days. So there's a total of 279 possible points where the pivot could happen out of 365. So that means we're looking at a random forecast with those parameters being accurate 76% of the time. Or I should actually say 76% of the pivots would be would fall into accurate parameters. But we're not done yet, of course, because we didn't take care of the weekends. And the fact of the matter is the price data that we had to deal with had no Saturdays. Because back in 1929, Saturday was a trading day. And so GAN's forecast actually encompassed you know, Saturdays, if there's a Saturday on the forecast, it would actually be a trading day. So he would have to, for this forecast, he would have 365 days and subtract out all of the Sundays because if a pivot landed on a Sunday, it would be pushed to Monday or Tuesday or pulled back to Friday or Saturday. So instead of 365 total possible points, you're only actually dealing with 313 possible points. So that 279 would be divided by 313, not 365. And as a result, we're looking at a 90% accuracy rate, almost. But the data I had didn't have the Saturdays, so we actually have to subtract out both the Saturdays and the Sundays. Okay, so we're looking at 365 minus Sunday, 52 Sundays, and minus 52 Saturdays, which brings us to 261 possible points, okay? But 20 of the days that GAN has in this forecast actually land on a Saturday or Sunday. So we have to add those back in to here as a possibility, so we would do plus 20. So the final number is 281. So we would do 279 divided by 281 to give us a 99% success rate. So what that means is with a randomly generated forecast in this year with 50 pivot points, we can expect it to be the time of the pivot points with the parameters that we gave. We can expect that to be accurate for 99% of the time or 99% of the pivots are going to be good. And as we found, we went through the forecast, remember in the last video, and all of the pivots pretty much fit. Some of them, like five or six of them, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, I think it was five, had to be stretched where we stretched it to the maximum in the allowable um, rules, the parameters. But the result was that pretty much everything fit. And as far as the time element is concerned, that's exactly what we would expect. Now, obviously, you can't technically get above 100% success rate, so we can't say that, as far as time goes, we cannot say that GAN's forecast here is any better than what we would expect to happen from a random forecast, given the parameters that were used in the last video. Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow that and understand it and we will dig into the polarity issue because it's not as simple as dividing by two because we have either a high or a low to use so we're going to have to dig into that those mathematical calculations in the next video that i do on this and so anyway anytime any forecast that looks like this a high low forecast you can determine what uh, the success rate would be of a randomly generated forecast, at least for the time frame, 
for the timing of it by using this methodology. You find out how many possible pivots, how many possible points there are in that, because it might be a forecast for a month or for 90 days or whatever, but you find out how many possible points there are. In this case, there were a total of 365 when we started. You find out how many pivots are expected in there, and then you start doing the math. And of course, you have to accommodate the expectations of the person making the forecast. In other words, do they count the weekends? Do they not count the weekends? How do they deal with that? Do they expect plus or minus a day on either side? Do they expect plus or minus two days? All that needs to be taken into account, but can very actually very easily be calculated and you can derive a expectation of what a randomly generated forecast would be. And if the forecast given performs better, then there's probably something to that. So as of right now, the forecast as we looked at it in the last video does not perform any better than we would expect the randomly generated forecast to perform as far as time goes. We'll look at the pivots in the next one, or the math for the pivots, and then we'll start to work with those numbers, and we can see whether or not this actually really was a special forecast. So anyway, hopefully you find this interesting, and this helps you and gives you a little another tool to use to, to not anticipate, but to see whether or not something that someone's presenting to you is actually, in fact, something that's worthy of further study. Until next time, this is Henry Steele.